your voice is maybe on video, but it'll be really bad. Oh, I, I, I don't. I don't know if they'll hear it. But. Yeah, they'll probably they're probably just gonna hear muffled. And it's not gonna be you're gonna hear more. Thanks, Dylan. Okay. <laughs> unit we just finished this unit on the mole and so this unit on the mole is going to be really important to us as we move into this unit so basically this unit is going to take our unit on unit analysis which we used in the last unit and the idea of the mole and combine it to our chapter on writing balanced equations now we're going to marry some things together so stoichiometry is where you use a balanced equation to compute amounts of a species in a reaction. And so I'm going to show you examples of what that means um, as we go through. idea you don't have chemical reactions that you typically are looking at in life but how many of you have used a recipe before yeah of course so let's think of a simple recipe i'm going to write it here um you're going to figure out what this is you might figure it out now why did i say three because it's one row of a Hershey bar, right? It's like three little pieces. No, no. no, like the one has three little, some of you know what I'm talking about. The, yeah, right? So two graham crackers, one marshmallow, three chocolates gives you one s'more. So here's the question for you, because this is really the context of this chapter. If I have plenty of stuff, but I have five marshmallows, how many s'mores can I make? Five, right? Or if I have seven graham crackers and plenty of marshmallows and chocolate, how many s'mores can I make? <laughs> it's like three or three and a half. How many full s'mores can I make? Three. And of course I'd have some graham cracker left over, right? Um, if I have nine graham crackers and say six pieces of chocolate and plenty of marshmallows how many s'mores could i make yeah this one you're like I, I, wait, let me think about it for a second with this amount and this recipe how many <laughs> right? Why, Gabby? Yeah, I've got enough of this to make two s'mores, right? How many s'mores could I make with the graham crackers? Four, but I'd run out of chocolate, right? And so I could make two s'mores. This idea is what we're doing, except, of course, we're not using food. We're going to use a chemical reaction. To do this and instead of using you know ingredients in our recipe we're going to use reactants but the context is the same so what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually show you kind of two different types of problems that we're going to encounter and we're going to do some problems related to this balanced equation And the two different types of problems, one is what I would call like basic stoichiometry. And I'll show you an example of that. And the other is limiting an excess stoichiometry. So two different types of problems, and we have to learn to recognize them, to know. So I'm going to give you two types of problems so you can notice how they differ. Given 
27 moles of nitrogen. How many moles of ammonia can you make? And then I'm going to write a different type of problem so that we can see how they look different. So given 27 moles of N2 and 35 moles of H2, how many moles of ammonia can you make? How do they differ? How do those, how, like if you're going, hey, how do I know which is which? How do they differ? Okay, so if I'm like literally just looking at the problem and I want to say, hey, there's something in here that shows me that it's a different, the two are different types of problems. Like, what do I see? And literally written down, it's going to show me that they're different. Because you're right. Hannah? Yeah. Yeah, because like in this one, I'm just given the, the one amount of one reaction, right? one, I'm actually given the amount of one reactant and the amount of another reactant. And so that tells me that's this kind of problem compared to this one where I only have one amount of one reactant. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with the basic stoichiometry because it seems like the thing we should start with. All right. So here, here's the big thing that we're going to add. I'm going to rewrite. You do not need to do it, but I can't see my balance equation. Oops, I need to write the balance equation down here. Um, I can't see the balance equation because I just pulled it up, but I'm going to just have it so I can, wow, I cannot write it. So here's, here's the big thing I'm going to add to your repertoire. What do these coefficients in the prop mean? And by the way, you read about this, right? Ethan? Or like in this case, they're molecules. So, right? So, like, yeah, so one molecule of this, so three molecules of this, and two molecules of that. Kaylee? Exactly. So, these coefficients could refer to molecules or atoms if it was an atom. But in our context, we're going to be interested because they are, it just, it does, like Kaylee said, it's a relative amount. If it's one molecule of this and three molecules of this, it would also be true that if I had one mole of nitrogen, I would require three moles of hydrogen. But that becomes a conversion for me. Or for every one mole of nitrogen, I will make two moles of ammonia. So in this first problem, where I have 27 moles of nitrogen, I can use, from my balanced equation, I can make a mole ratio because I have nitrogen, I want ammonia. According to this, I need one mole of nitrogen to make two moles of ammonia, and that's my conversion. So one mole of nitrogen, I put N2 on the bottom so it cancels, makes two moles of ammonia, and so I get 54 moles of ammonia. And that's assuming I had plenty of the one I didn't mention. I had plenty of nitrogen or hydrogen. So this is the piece that we're adding. We went in the last chapter, we went from grams to moles and moles to grams. In this chapter, we're able to convert from moles of one substance to moles of another 
using the balanced equation to create our conversions. It becomes really important, you guys, that you don't just write moles, that you write moles of this and moles of this because they're different. So if I have this problem, this does not mean one gram of this is three grams of this, two grams of this. It does not mean that. One mole, three moles, two moles. So if I'm given a problem where it's 29.2 grams of nitrogen and I want grams of ammonia, what am I going to have to do before I can do that? I need the molar mass and I need to convert to moles. Um, so if I can convert this to moles, then I can use that. And I can get to moles of ammonia. But I don't want moles of ammonia, do I? No. How am I going to get to grams of ammonia? Using the molar mass. We can do that in one long string of conversions. Try it. Are you getting all the problems? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's take a look up here. Oh, I got to unfreeze this. Hold on. Take a look at your work. Okay. Take a look at your work. I did what I said, right? Grams into moles. Because I can't use the balanced equation until I do that. Then I did moles of nitrogen and moles of ammonia. I used those coefficients from the balanced equation. And then, because I asked for grams, Bless you. Does that make sense? Anand. Right? Which means we have to have a balanced equation. Which means if I give you something and the equation's not balanced, you have to balance it first to get these numbers. Are you with me? Seems too long. It's long. Like some of the some of the two and threes in your book are saying, what's this unbalanced equation thing mean? How is this going to work? But you should always check. You should always check. Okay? All right. So there's all different I could give you grams of hydrogen and ask for moles of ammonia. So you don't do the last step, right? You just stop at moles. Or maybe I want to know, hey, if I give you this many moles of nitrogen, how many grams of hydrogen would it take to react with it? Great. If I have moles of this, I could just do one to three ratio. And then I, so you just have to look at where you're started. But remember that you can only use this in moles. So if you start in moles, great. You can use this directly. If you start in grams, then it's the moles. My mantra, when in doubt, convert to moles. Okay. When in doubt, convert to moles. Now, I'm going to teach you something. Now we're going to look at this kind of problem, limiting an excess stoichiometry. I'm actually having you not read 9.5 in your book because I'm going to teach you a method that's a little different than the way they show it, but I think it's it requires actually less work. So, you know, we like less work sometimes. Same problem. We're going to go ahead and, and do this problem. But I'm going to show you. So this, this kind of problem, by the way, is like this. 
right? I gave you two reactions and you guys in your mind had to be like, okay, I'm going to run out of chocolate. And so I, I can only make as much s'more, as many s'mores as I have chocolate. So that's what this problem is. I'm probably going to run out of either the nitrogen or the hydrogen. And so that one's going to tell me how much I can make. But here's the method I'm going to show you. When you do these problems, I'm going to put this here. I want you to make a table. And at the top of this table, well, actually, let me make this table. I want you to write the balanced equation. So nitrogen plus hydrogen yields ammonia. And then that table is going to have three rows. It's an ice table. upper left-hand corner up here, we're going to, this entire table is going to be done in moles. I'm going to show you how this works. All right. I stand for initial. C stands for change. E stands for end. So we're going to do this problem. So it's given 27 moles of nitrogen. And so what is given in the problem is what I'm usually, not always, there will be some problems where it's not the case, but usually what's going to go initially. Like this is how much I start with. That goes in the initial. So as long as it's in moles, I can write it into my table. So I have 27 moles. I don't even need to write the unit because I wrote it up here. Of nitrogen. And I have. 35 moles of hydrogen. How much ammonia am I starting with? Before the reaction has happened, how much do I have? None. Now I'm going to make some, but before the reaction happens, I have none. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. And this is a shortcut. I'm going to normalize what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that number, 27, and I'm going to divide it by the coefficient. Clearly, that's a 27. Then I'm going to do the same thing for my hydrogen. 35 divided by 3. The 3 is my coefficient. All right, Jack. I know you just throw that in. What is 35 divided by 3? 11.7, and this is 27. Whoever gives you the smaller number is the limiting reactant. Or gives you the number. The limiting reactant is the one you run out of. Like in my graham cracker and chocolate, I would run out of chocolate because I only had enough to make two s'mores. So what that means is the one that is my limiting reactant, I'm going to run out of, which means in the end, I'm going to end up with zero of it. Okay, I'm going to lose some. I went from 35 down to zero. So the change, I'm losing, so it's negative, 35 minus something. It's going to be negative, we're going to call it negative 3x. Why a 3? Because that's the coefficient. And I know that that is equal to, how much did it, does it lose? 
35. So what's X? We already did it, right? It's 11.7. So we're going to keep that in mind for a second. using up nitrogen so I'm gonna use up I'm gonna lose some nitrogen how many X would I lose I'm gonna lose one X from that coefficient well how much is X it's 11.7 so I'm losing 11.7 I had already figured that X out. Why are they not losing the same numbers of moles? Like, why are these two different numbers? Yeah, because this is losing three for every time this one loses one, right, from our balanced equation. Uh-oh, what's 27 minus 11.7? Thank you. That was pretty good. All right. If we're losing this stuff, then we're making ammonia, right? So we're going to gain some. How much are we gaining? In terms of X, we're going to gain 2X. Because that's a 2, and that's a 2. Okay. What's 2X? Oh, you guys are so good. So we're gaining 23.4. Can someone tell me where did 23.4 come from? It's 11.7 times 2. So how much ammonia am I done with? Or am I ending with? 0 plus 23.4. And so how many moles of ammonia can you make? 23.4 moles. You like it or you don't like it? Okay. We're going to try another one. Mia. So to, it's not necessarily, like, you have to fill out the table. So, I mean, if, if you could do this and you could figure out how much ammonia you could make. In fact, this one, 9, 5 will tell you. And you can take this separately and you can figure out how much ammonia you can make. Where the time saving stuff will come in are the follow up questions that I have. Okay? So you're right, simply finding this. But the issue is you can't just go from 35 to this unless you've already figured out this equation. Like if you just start here, you don't necessarily know it's limiting just by this one. Okay? All right, you ready to try another one? <laughs> sure, you are. Of course, you are. All right. Guess what I'm going to give you in units? Of course, right? So here's the question. How many grams of ammonia will be produced? My stress is like lagging behind what I'm writing, and it's freaking me out. You don't see it, but I see my stylus not attached to the writing. All right, produced from 27 grams of hydrogen and 120 grams of nitrogen. How do I know this is limiting an excess? What do I see right away that tells me this kind of problem? Two reactants. Okay, so it's the same ice table. We're going to put new numbers in it. But before I can plug it in, what do I have to do? Yeah, so over here, I want you to show your work for initial conversions to moles. So over on the side, I want you to take 
bunch of nitrogen and convert it to moles, and then when you do that, you can plug it into your table. So go ahead and do that. Are you saying you're getting a lemon? Who's got moles of hydrogen? Who knows what this number is? Dylan? 13 point what? Four. Moles of hydrogen. Who's got the number for nitrogen? Okay, Dylan, tell me. Anyone else get these numbers? We got confirmation out there. So we got it. We've got to change it into moles, and then we can plug it into our table. So I have 13.4 moles of nitrogen and 4.28 moles of hydrogen. Did I just do that? Oh, because I wrote this wrong. This, sorry. Oh, we should definitely would, and I don't know what that fourth sig fig is. Do you? Uh, yes. It's, woo, 4.283. Yes, agreed. Okay, so let's do a quick thing. We can actually figure out, like, when we normalize it, we're really figuring out what X is. So, 4.283 divided by 1 is? 4.283. Now we don't know which x we're going to use. This one is 13.4 divided by 3 is, I don't know what that is. 4.4, 7. Okay, so x could equal this one or this one. It depends which is limiting. Which number is smaller? 4.283. It's not this one. It also means that nitrogen is nitrogen our limiting reactant or our excess reactant. It means we're going to run out of that. It also means that the other reactant is our excess reactant. So if this is our limiting reactant, what number can I fill in? Zero. And then we lost minus 1x. Well, what's minus 1x? Minus 4.283. Well, we knew that, right? Okay. Excess reactant. How much am I losing here if it reacts? I'm losing 3x. Uh-oh. What's 3x? 12. Wait, 12.5. And that's three times. I don't know. So 13.4 minus, minus 12.85? Or 8.12? Why did I just do that? Wait, because it's a subtraction. To the tenth place minus the hundredth place to the tenth place. Subtraction? Eight. Eight. Okay. Uh, how much ammonia did I start with before it reacted? None. All right, figure out the rest of that thing right now.
Am I gaining ammonia or losing ammonia? Is this a plus or a minus? Plus. Plus how many X's? Plus two X's. What is two X's? Eight. 8.566. Right, so two of those X's. So this becomes. Have I now answered the question? No. No. Okay. Ethan, question. So we have we got two possible x's when we did it. So if we take the 4.283 and we divide it by 1 for this coefficient, we got this number. So when we did it with this one, we got that. Whichever one is bigger, we cross out. And it's the smaller one. And that also tells us that this is limiting. Jack. Uh, no, because the zero is literally nothing, so it doesn't have significant digits. Because it's lit. it's not like we measured it's, it, it. There's not a chance of it being 0 0.0001, right? Because we haven't made any yet. Okay, wait. So wait, how do we get to the? Who can tell me? How do I finally answer the question? Because I actually am almost there, but I didn't quite answer the question. What do I do now, Kiana? When I answer the question, I'm going to use the information from the end row. So I needed grams of ammonia, so 8.566 moles of ammonia. And one mole of ammonia, some kind person with a calculator, 145 point nine. 146.0? Is that not? No, is that right? 146.0 grams of ammonia. All right, so this goes now to Mia's question because now Mia was like, well, really? Do we have to do all that work? So here are the follow up questions that you're typically asked. Like, one question might be who's the limiting reactant? Well, who would, what would you answer? Who's the limiting reactant? Nitrogen, who's the excess reactant? Hydrogen. But then here's the, some follow up questions. How many grams of the excess reactant? Oh, yeah. And in, the, in, in what you were describing, you actually would have to do some additional calculations. But when you've done this table, you've actually already done all the hard calculations. Everything is here. So how many grams of the excess reactant are left over? Well, what do we know about the excess reactant and how much is left over? 0.6 what? Moles of hydrogen never got used. Like we used up all the nitrogen, but this never got used. So we have 0.6 moles of hydrogen that are left over. And then we can convert that into grams. Which is, yeah, one point, uh, someone with a calculator, don't make me worry, it's hard. 1.24. Oh, it's only one sig fig. Oh my gosh. One gram. <laughs> and it only one sig fig. Now, I'm going to need to think about sig figs with this method because I'm not sure if I'm loving them or hating them. That might work out the same, does it? Uh, do we ever love sig figs? Yeah, that's a good question. So I, I'm going to get back to you on that. But we can now ask loads of questions. And if you have that table set up, you're actually equipped to answer any number of questions that I could ask you about. So 